see. Hmm. How are you guys doing? We're in the studio. Just give me a second. Get this case going the right direction here. Sounds like I broke the iPad, but I didn't. All right, and then I need something to wedge underneath this. Today, we're going to be glazing attractor pieces, um, which are like pots and pretty much um, any kind of uh, ware that we make. Hello? Hi! Um, we make ware for advertisements, and we call them adver or sorry, um, attractor pieces. And we call them that because we like to make them look as good as possible, so you guys want to buy our glaze. Um, Sorry, I'm like hunting down something to prop up the edge of this iPad so you guys can see me a little bit better. That's better. All right, so I've got a series of pots here that are, these two are going to be Shino layering pots for the future. This one's going to be Matcha Matte, and this one's going to be Cacao Gloss. Thank you, they're actually regular glasses. I got them tinted on Zenny. I didn't know that was an option, but it is. So I did it. <laughs> um, this is an attractor piece for Jade. Um, we're layering the Celadons with the Potter's Choice glazes right now. Um, and Jade Weeping Plum is going to be on this one. And I'll tell you what layers we're putting on as we go, too. But I won't be able to show you guys the tiles because those will come out in a magazine and you'll have to see it as a surprise. And this one's going to be Marigold, the yellow one. So, um, the people that make these, um, Kara made the two Shino pots, and, um, I made the three Celadon pots. And, uh, hello, Clayscapes! Hello, Tim, how are you doing? Um, nice to kind of meet you with my face. <laughs> um, meow. So, I'm gonna use Matcha Mat first. And, um, yeah, so you're just gonna hang out, watch me glaze. I can answer some questions about any of the Shinos or the Celadons or the PC layering. Um, for the Shinos, we like to apply three coats and three coats. It's the same for Celadons and PCs too. Um, makes them nice and juicy, makes them so they run and they have all their effects. Um, and uh, we, as a rule, fire them to cone six and both are done on 11M Amix white stoneware from Amico. Um, all of our pieces for uh, PC on PC layering, PC Celadon layering, Shino PC layering, all of that we have rules as per like what clay we use so they look the same every time and the effects are the same every time and everything. So we like to make it as consistent as possible and then when we're done making the pieces, we don't make the Shinos in dry mix yet and I'm not sure, I haven't heard any talk of that. So um, I can ask about it. Actually I brought a notebook. So I can write down questions to ask Steven. I keep lots of writing utensils in my hair just for this reason exactly. Okay, Sheena dries. Thanks, Tim. Yes, I love having a notebook. I have it on me on time, all the time. All the time. Like, never not have it. I think I actually have like four or five on me at all times um, for different reasons. I have like a personal journal. I have, um, that personal journal is also for, um, for dreams and astrology stuff and uh, then I have a glaze notebook and sketchbook and I also have a work notebook with all my to-do lists for social media because that's a thing in itself. Let me sit up here. It's a little bit better. So we just kind of flop it on there and this is probably gonna go. He's not watching. He is downstairs. He's working on some stuff. He's got better things to do, I guess. I'm just kidding. He's got really important things to do. I'm just up here trying to cover because we have a lot of work to do this week. And usually I'm not up here glazing. This was my old job um, before I started running the social media. But luckily I get up here every once in a while. And I still get to do my old job, which is nice. Open bobs. I don't know what that means. It is almost in Sika time. That's why we're kind of wild. Um... Yep, just trying to keep up on normal stuff and Enseca stuff at the same time because we always have advertisements going out. But for Enseca, we have to work on boards. We have to uh, get everybody organized for, like, demos and stuff like that. Aww. <laughs> Let's 
So, and this stuff's not for Inseca, but um, this is trying to get us ahead um, of advertisements. Um, would you mind telling me how to block people really quick? Like, I'm, I'm new to that, and I haven't gotten heckled too bad so far. Um, is there a way to do that while I'm streaming? Sorry to, like, ask you a question back. <laughs> No, no. Haha. -ha. That was fast. All right, I figured it out. Quick learner over here. Mm -mm. Don't want any of that. All right. Sorry, this is going to take a while, but luckily I can move fast and move on to the next pot while this one dries. So sometimes I just kind of pour it in there and then move it around with my brush as quickly as I can. Especially with deep pots. Sorry, we just got really messy. And you can't see me as well. Doing the inside of that. Yes, and I think we made your sign today. Um, are you guys having a Richard Nichols sign? Um, Cause it's adorable and I saw it and it's really cute. I should have had a sponge here. Ghosting or halo transfer? I've never heard about that. That sounds interesting. Our underglaze is extremely good for transfers. I like doing plaster transfers with them where you paint directly onto the plaster and then you pour a casting slip into like a, a little moat. Okay, cool. Yeah, the... Um, is that the fuming effect that kind of happens where it kind of billows out in the glaze? I don't know exactly how to put it descriptively. Like ghosts, like the little ghost that happens around the edge of the black under clear. Oh, like fuming, okay. Do the underglazes fume? Sometimes I'm just a potter learning things here. Interesting. I didn't know that. That's really cool. Actually, I might have to... Does it fume onto glazes? Or does it, um... Like, is it with particular glazes with particular things in them? That's interesting. Actually, I might write that down. The fuming black underglaze. I will. Thank you. Is there a way I can... I'll just write it down. Chorus clay. I will check that out. Thank you. Can't wait to see an example of that. That sounds really cool. All right, so I got the matcha matte piece gloss. I'm going to go with the cacao gloss now. I don't know, guys. Have you seen Portlandia? Because cacao is a funny word. <laughs> cacao. That's great. I might need an extra one for the inside of this. I just do this. They're not necessarily pouring glazes, but I do that to get the insides of these since we don't necessarily need to see the inside for the advertisement. But it just gets that inside belly all full so I can get inside and outside. If you put a pot back inside, of, sorry, if you put a pot inside a pot to bisque the black will show up on the adjacent pot. Interesting. I'm going to watch that later and check that out because um, I'm interested in that. Is it a, um, would you, cons the way that you talked about it, was it an accident or did you discover it? Do you use it purposefully? That's interesting. Do, 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 glazing time. Everybody knows how fun glazing time is, right? Hello, Mud Queen Pottery. How are you? Cool. So it is kind of an accident when that happens. I bet there's a cool way to, like, use that somehow, which I'd be interested in playing with. So when I put these on, I'm paying attention to what direction my strokes are going. Um because the next time I'm going to go back through and do the opposite. 
um, for my second one. Not such a good one necessarily, though. I could understand that. But those happy accidents sometimes are good. Not all the time, though. They're so, like, not reactive. I'm interested in the chemistry behind that and what they're giving off. I'll have to talk to Steve Lamprin about that. Steve Lamprin is our glaze technician. He has all the answers. Whenever I have to ask him any questions for the, um, the glossary videos that I make, I don't know if you guys have been on the resources page of our website, but um, Kara, my coworker, and I have made several glossary videos, like not several, like 60 or 70. They're all on our YouTube and some of them are on our website. Um, of just like terms and techniques and tools and pretty much anything you may need to know for ceramics. Um, yeah, we also uh, put out a really cool how-to today, which those are under the resources as well, along with the uh, along with the lesson plans that we create for teachers and everything. But if you want shorter like how-to techniques and everything, that's under the how-tos. Um, there's clay how-tos, craft how-tos, since we also have craft products. Um, like friendly plastic, um, I think like uh, permaplast, stuff like that. Whoa, hey, look at all those hearts. <laughs> hey, Misfit Dynamo. Sorry, that's a little backwards. Miss Dynamo. Misfit Dynamo. Words are hard. Thank you, Chorus Clay. And I'm going to remember you now because I said you out loud. I'm going to find you later. Hunt you down. Look at that underglaze video. I want to know about it. All right, I'm done with the cacao. So for the um, matcha mat, I've decided Corey. Sorry, Corey's clay. You don't get apostrophes in your name, do you? Sorry. Hello, Corey. So I'm gonna use Lustrous Jade over the. Um, over the matcha mat. It produces a little bit of blue, but it keeps some green on it, so um, so it kind of complements the green a little bit, but it's got that blue that everybody likes. And uh, on the cacao gloss, I'm gonna put tourmaline. So, and these are gonna go into um, Potter's Pottery Making Illustrated and uh, Ceramics Monthly, and that's what I'm doing. I'm decorating the pots for those. Because you got to do it sometime, otherwise we won't have them, right? Even if it is in Sika time. So this next plate that I'm doing, I'm over, in, over into Celadons. And I'm going to use Jade. Jade's one of my favorites. It's really pretty, and I think it's closest to like a really regular Celadon color, just a little bit deeper. And um, I'm doing it on this really nice, this really nice leaf plate that I made. Yay, in Sika! And Seek is awesome. And if any of you guys are there, I'm going to be there, and I'll see you guys. Yep, I do some of them. Um, my friend Kara does them too. And we have a newer girl. Her name's Shantae, and she's been making a couple of the Shino pieces. Um, I think the acai matte one that's coming out um, is going to be hers. Might be gloss. I might have just lied to you. I think it was acai gloss, because matcha matte is next. We try to do back and forth, like matte, gloss, matte, gloss. Keep everybody interested. I try to do that with Textile Tuesday too, and like go back and forth um, between low fire and high fire, and then those that like uh, span any temperature. So, um, yeah, I'm the I'm the secret ghost behind Textile Tuesday. We have this whole tile room full of just tests and stuff that we've done to try and find combinations for all of these, and. Um, oh, but I hope they do. Um, are you in a place where you can order off our website? Because we do have them on our website. I know it can get kind of expensive to ship stuff, though. Textile Tuesday is extremely fun. I have a lot of fun doing that, and I'm glad people like it so much. It's a really good time. Um, and it gives me a chance to learn, too. Um, working here is just as much an education as, like, going to school, really. And it's really nice because I get to do it in kind of a safe environment where, like, you know, I have to do the thing even if I don't want to. Um, and I end up learning it. Do I ever have crazy when using matte? on inside or outside other tension. The matte chinos, I have never noticed crazing on the chinos, but I don't think I've actually looked so so hard at them that I would see that, because they're really dark. Um, 
but I'll pay attention for that. Um, if that's what you mean, like crazing with the matte chinos. Sorry, journal time. It's my handy little little black notebook full of answers. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to glaze the back of this one the same color. I'm going to wait for it to dry, though. And on this, um, when using two different sheens on the same pot, different and outside. Oh, crazing. Yeah, that can happen, and it can also split your pot. Um, so there is this particular glaze combination that I use at the other studio that I work at, and um, I've only gotten it to not split my pot once. It's so pretty together, but the it, one is extremely glossy, and the other is extremely matte. The matte one likes to flow a lot, and the glossy one stays put. So the tension between wanting to move a lot and the wanting to stay put on the inside with the moving one on the outside creates this tension on that wall and it goes rip and it'll rip your pot or like the expansion will make crazing and stuff like that. So you got to make uh, sure that if you are putting two different glazes together that have different stiffnesses or one moves and one doesn't, that you put them in the right place so they don't have too much tension or just layer one like dead on top of the other underneath it. I hope that made sense. So I'm going to do Weeping Plum on this one. And for the jade plate, I'm going to, cool, I'm glad. I don't make a lot of sense sometimes, but a lot of the times I do. But when I don't make sense, it doesn't make sense at all. All right. Arctic Blue is what I'm going to put on the jade plate, and it turns it very pretty. But I'm going to apply it with this little uh, slip trailer, probably, and get some lines going, because there's some really nice details on that plate, and not a lot of room for layering. So I want to make sure to also kind of show people how else to apply their glaze, um, not just brushing, not just dipping, using an, a slip trailer, anything like that. All right. Um, Weepy Plum, where are you? There you are. So, um, I don't know if you can tell, I like pink. Uh, Weeping Plum is one of my favorite celadons. I think it's really, really pretty. Um, the one I'm going to layer with this is Albany Slip Brown. Um, and this is one of my favorite combinations because it kind of takes a lot of the brown out of the Albany Slip Brown and it turns into this really fluid white. Oh, yeah. Ancient Jasper layers over everything super well, and I love it. Especially like Smoky Mulo and stuff, and when you layer, um, when you layer with Ancient Jasper, it gets these neat little tiny little fingers at the end, and they're so pretty because they're full of color, and I love them. Yeah, working here after a while, you get to know the, <laughs> you get to know the glazes like they're little kids all the time. Obsidian is like one of, it is our most popular layering glaze. Um, with the PCs. It takes a lot of them really well, um, especially Ancient Jasper. My favorite one over Obsidian, I think, is Lustrous Jade because um, it turns really galaxy blues with lots of like, um, a, like a white float and blues and it's got a little bit of green in it still. It loses a lot of that like real pale green though and turns blue. Right? It's hard to stop once you start, um, especially with the celadons. Um, I've developed a carving problem <laughs> because of the celadons. Like, all I ever do is carve now. So I'm like, well, I could just put a celadon on that. Yeah, chase those nebula. Go to space. I just went through my first bottle of Lustre today, and I can't believe it took me so long to try it, right? It's one of those glazes that you don't really use a lot by itself, but once you layer it with things, you're like, wait a minute, I've got wizardry in my cabinet. And then you use it all the time. I love it. So, and it's really interesting after seeing all these different combinations, like I see all the chinos and the PC and Celadon layering and stuff come out of the kiln, and it's so interesting to see how different each glaze is over not just every glaze like in the piece, like in the series, but just like between the chinos and thank you very much, they're actually regular glasses, so you can just get like 50% tinted on Zenny. And I was like, why not? Uh, it's actually really nice. It kind of softens the light in here. It's a little bit bright for me in here. Sometimes I get a headache, but no more. And they don't have glare, which is nice. My friend pointed that out to me when I was taking pictures. She's like, your glasses, they're pink. They resist glare. So I'm down with that. You can see my eyes. These without. Not very good.
so much cooler. And then I can read your comments. <laughs> um, so sorry this one's taking a little bit extra time. When I use the celadons, I like to make sure I get into the nooks and crannies of my carving. Because as you can see, I get kind of crazy when I carve. I take out like a big divot with like a loop tool and then I use a real tiny one and I take a nick right out of the middle and that makes it so there's like a pool of like lighter pink and then this streak of dark pink and it looks really good. You can kind of like in a way render using, hi, you can render um, patterns in a way and like change the shade of however deep the celadon is pooling uh, based on how you carve. Um, one of these days I should do a periscope of me carving one of the pieces because it's a lot of fun to do that. Um, when we glaze the celadon and chino layering pieces, we um, lock an entire coat of that first glaze, um, which is the glaze we're technically advertising. Um, like when I put this weeping plum um, up to photograph and they put it in the magazine and everything, um, it's going to be advertising weeping plum as a glaze that layers well with these PCs. And um, it'll show you like some sample tiles and those are what I shop through to like find, um, find what I wanna put on these. And that's what I was doing earlier today, which is why I'm here a little bit in the afternoon because I was picking out pillars, going shopping, picking what I wanna put on these. That's a fun part of my day. So like I said, Kara would normally be doing this. Um, I do this sometimes when we need a little extra help in the studio, but Kara is on her way to Texas because she had a loss in the family and I just wanted to help her out and get this stuff done, especially with Nsika going on. I know another one of my responsibilities soon is, um... hello Russell, oh I'm sorry, <laughs> Ellers. <laughs> I feel bad now. Um, how are you? Thank you for watching. I see so many names pop up that I'm just like, oh, a guy named Russell. <laughs> and it is bad. And I feel very bad. She came to me yesterday. I was at my desk and, and she came and she gave me a hug and I held her there. I told her I didn't have anything to do for the rest of the day if she wanted to stand there and hug me, but she had to buy a plane ticket. So, um, but I just talked to her, um, this morning and she's, she's feeling all right. Bonjour! Actually, I just speak Spanish. I'm sorry. I tried to learn French, and I can read it, but I cannot pronounce it. It's very bad. I think it's because I've been speaking Spanish for so long. Um, do 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 I feel like I'm boring you guys to death. Wow. Instablock. All right. How's that? <laughs> a really good way to not have sex with somebody. <laughs> I know. I figure. I wish there was a way to do this without having my face on here, you know, but it's kind of fun because you guys really have never heard my how did I block without touching it. I touched it. Um, I touched it from, I don't think you saw my arm move. I was very smooth. I'm like a ninja. I ninja blocked him. That's how fast I was. <laughs> Oh, I bet. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait until I get that block list up. Makes me feel good. Like I'm actually doing something. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, why are those people watching pottery stuff anyway? Pottery is not for them. Alright. So, now that this jade split is dry, I'm gonna put stuff on the bottom. But I'm gonna make sure it's the right glaze first and not the wrong one. So yeah, for Inseco later, I've got to, um, I think I've got to go through all our tiles and everything and get them organized so we can start Velcroing them to the boards so you guys can come check them out at our booth. Can I get some hearts for Inseco? Who's all going to Inseco? I'm really, really excited. I love going to Inseco because I get to talk to so many people. Oh yeah, for sure. No, never. Especially since it's for a magazine and this is my job. Like, if I use the wrong glaze... I screwed up and I have to do it all over again. And I don't want to do that because I have so much other stuff to do.
Thank you for sending hearts. If you're really joking, I don't want to block you. I can't tell if you're really not joking or not, though. Hey, but that's pretty cool, though. Like, you live in Tasmania. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, I live in Indiana. That's not cool as Tasmania. What's in Tasmania? That's crazy. I'm going to go look up pictures of that place later. I, sometimes foreign countries just don't occur to me as, like, somewhere you can live. Not that I'm ignorant, obviously, but... I just think that's so cool. The two con or three countries that I've been to when I landed there, it's just like, this is a place I can be. I can be here. Dingoes! Very cool. I have not been that far. That is close. I was in Singapore. I know that's not that close. I was in Singapore in June, I think. And that was pretty cool. That place is like the future. The walking future. It's very clean, too. And you're not allowed to take durians in the taxi for some reason. And a durian is just a giant fruit. I guess it smells really bad. I'm off topic. Uh, almost done here. I've got my, um, closer to Antarctica than Singapore. Makes sense. Yeah, much more south. But never been in a place where I can look at a map and actually see New Zealand and be like, oh, so that's where it is in reference to me because Indiana's all the way over here in the in the Midwest Midwest is best I don't know if you guys know this but um, Amico has been in Indianapolis since 1919 I have never been to Scandinavia um, not at all not even close yeah tangents do lead to amazing things I tend to try and let myself talk sometimes because it brings up good things well, very cool. I love foreign people. Seriously, like, languages, anything like that, bring it on. Like, I want to know everything about your country. Like, not right now, but later. Probably going to look stuff up. Swedish. Just sweet-ish. You're not, like, really, really sweet. <laughs> oh, but you live in Idaho, so you're not that far. Welcome to America. Canadian here. It's so cool to see how many people are watching from like around the world or just in Idaho. <laughs> Do my glass <laughs> actually a little bit. Um, my eyes correct after a while, but when I take them off, everything is super green. Wish we had a New York branch so you could work for Amico. That would be really cool. We're still super, super homegrown. <laughs> um, but we like it that way. It's really nice to be a local. I'm taking my rings off because this I gotta stick my arm inside this pot real quick because it's a tall one. Um, yeah, Indi Indianapolis has been home to Amico for um, almost a hundred years. A guy named Tom Philpot started it, and or T O Philpot. Sorry, not Tom. My <laughs> brain added an M. Um, T.O. Philpot started this, and, uh, he was, this is hilarious, he was a huge game hunter, but then after a while he had some, like, weird guilt, so he started just bringing home the animals alive, and when Amico was located across the way, if you want to see the texture on this, that's going to be yellow, look at all those yellow hearts from my yellow glaze pot, yep, he had a zoo, he had a zoo in the back, so when people would come to Amico, they would, um, not just get a tour of the uh, of the company that made glaze and uh, clay and craft supplies and stuff like that, but they would also get a little like zoo trip. So I can't imagine being like an elementary school student. Now the animals work there. That's true. We've all matured. My mane has tamed. <laughs> I was one of the lions before. Maybe. I don't know. I think I might have been a hyena based on my laugh. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, look at all those yellow hearts. Yellow hearts for Marigold. Yay! Marigold's also my sister's cat. So I told my I told my coworker that I was going to be making a pot for Marigold today. And then I laughed because I was like, oh, I hope my sister's cat likes it. Sorry, tangential. Funny story, though. I don't know. Maybe. So, I think I'll probably end up cutting this short before I end up putting the next layer on because I still have to put a couple more coats. 
couple more coats on each one of these because we do three. I don't understand the color of the hearts, like how that works. I'm probably going to have to look into that. Like, is it just like who you are any given day or whatever? That's interesting. This whole app is very interesting to me. I'm still reading about it, but I really like it. It's random. I like that. Random's good too. I'm one that seeks out patterns and tries to learn things and like lock stuff down. Order of signing on. Interesting. So there's lots of little nooks and crannies in here. I want to make sure that I get all the glaze into those little the little pock marks that I made in there. We do have a website for our glazes, amico.com, and you can buy glazes on there. You can also look at our resources. We have an entire layering. Um, I'm going to call it the layering machine. Um, you just like type in glazes that you want to see samples of layered, and um, if we have a picture of it, if it has gone out in an advertisement and we've launched the brochure, um, you can find it. And it's interesting because you can also hit the random button and just get random glaze combinations that you would never know that you would use, but they could be really cool. And whatever color one has... Oh! That's interesting. Thank you. Sorry, I like, I like learning things and, and this app is so new. So new and so fresh. The Amico website is seriously really, really cool. Um, our department worked really hard on that, and we continue to work really hard on that. We want to give you guys as much as possible. We put up as many like downloadable PDFs as we can. We have all the instructions that you would need like for the dipping glazes. There's a copy of the most updated instructions under the PC, um, under the PC page. Um, it also has all of the specific gravities listed. Um, for the dipping glazes in case you need to test those, which you should. You should keep up on testing your specific gravity for the glazes to make sure that they're working right. Because a lot of problems can be caused just by the specific gravity being off. And there's a video about that. And I don't know if you guys know, um, I can add you later if you, uh, if you go on now. Uh, our Amico 5-6 Exchange uh, Facebook page is a group where uh, fans of our glazes for cone 5 and cone 6 and like potter's choice layering and stuff like that all get together and discuss like how they make their wear, what they do, how they do it and uh, it's really good because people troubleshoot together um, and I help answer questions. Anything that comes up is pretty much fair game for me to answer so if I don't know the answer then I pretty much just run around until I find it and get it for you. It's a really good, uh, it's a good resource. And a really fun community. Everybody's really nice on there. It's almost like, it's almost 5,000 people. It's somewhere between 4,000 and 5,000. Um, but somehow they all just really get along. And uh, they all work together and, and share and post. And like when people have disasters or problems, like everybody's there with their issues and their, their solutions. Yeah. It's a really great group. I love them. And I love talking to them all the time. If any of you are on there, I'm your weird and fearful leader. Fearful. That's a good word to use. Fearless. I'm a fearless leader. Maybe. Maybe I said fearful on purpose. <laughs> so, deep pot. Deep. Sometimes if a pot's really deep, I'll load up my brush and kind of smack it up along the side. Like, if you can hear that. It's kind of like that video of that cat knocking on the back of their owner's door with its leg, like, D -d 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 I'm not used to how informal this app is. I'm sorry, I'm not a formal person. If you couldn't tell by the glasses. Yes, these are my favorite brushes. So we have to use synthetic kinds now. I use all fan brushes or hockey brushes when, which if I had a hockey brush around, I'd show you. I might pull one out later. Um, I use hockey brushes on bigger pieces. Um, these are all pretty small. Um, I use these fan brushes. But um, we're hanging on to these because they discontinued the, um, the natural hair and they're trying to replace it with the synthetic hair. Um, and uh, the one I tested is actually pretty fine. 
Like, I really can't tell the difference. But these load up really well. An Amico underglaze pen. We don't have pens. Is it a pencil? Um, and no, it won't burn off at cone 5. If it's one of the underglaze pencils, it'll stay put. Um, just lay it down hard enough. Yeah, so if it's a pencil, if it's a pencil, just lay it down. Um, you don't have to put a clear over it. But if you want it to be food safe, you should put a clear over it, like a food safe clear, obviously. All right, so I got my first coat on everybody. You forgot to sign a piece. Yes, definitely you want to sign the bottom of that. I like to use an underglaze applicator when I sign the bottom of my pieces because it's really gestural and it looks like a, like a thick calligraphy pen and I think it's really pretty. And um, it's got a good weight to it. So, let's see. Get the inside going here again. Doo, doo, doo. Remember we do three coats and three coats and I'm doing the Chino PC layering attractor pieces here. This one's matcha gloss, uh, or sorry, matcha matte, excuse me. It looks like that. And I thought it would look really nice with the kind of, um, kind of natural, almost Japanese kind of um, flora on it. I think he means pencil, I'm pretty sure. Um, I've used an underglaze marker before. I didn't like it very much. It was one of those squeezy ones. I'm not sure who made it. Um, but I felt like I was going to get carpal tunnel faster than I was going to write anything with it. Um, <laughs> the pencils are nice because they just kind of, they act like a pencil. But they look like a pencil when you use them too. So if you want the... Oh, I use um, just an, an underglaze uh, trailer or a slip trailer. So I just like doo -doo 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 on the bottom of my pot. That re-signing. Are you refiring a glazed piece um, with your signature on the bottom? Um, if you do that, this is pretty random, but you should do um, medium or slow fire. Don't fast fire that. Um, on the 5-6 page, I noticed that people like to fast fire their refires, and that is sending both the clay and the glaze through quartz inversion at the same time, and that can crack your piece. Um, that's an extremely violent motion um, because the silica goes from this to this really fast in its molecular form uh, within like 100 degrees. So if you do a fast fire, it does that really violently. If you do a slower fire, okay, cool. This is good information for anybody though, but I'm glad. Okay, so yeah, you can do underglaze pencil. You can use an underglaze uh, applicator, anything like that. You can just paint it on. But yeah, I actually don't, um, sometimes I call it an underglaze applicator because I rarely use them for slip. Sorry, just um, a slip applicator or a slip trailer. So normally, like, if I were to sign something, I would just, uh, let's see, I'd just go, boop, just like that, DP. This one's nice. Um, Steven gave it to me to try out. Um, honestly, not sure what brand it is yet, but um, you can take off the tip and uh, you switch it out with other tips and they have different gauges and stuff, it's nice. Um, I also have one of the ZM, nah, no, this isn't a ZM one, I'm pretty sure. They have usually pretty fancy packaging. Um, this one came in just kind of a blank package. I'm not sure. So this is one of, uh, this is one of the ones I normally use um, too. This is like just with black underglaze. So. Yeah, usually mine are just full black underglaze. I think I have one maybe that has slip in it because um, because of attractor pieces, basically. I slip trailed a little bit on this one to add the dots all throughout in there. Sim. Oh, that makes sense, you know? I'm just pronouncing things left and right. I don't even think about how to pronounce things sometimes, and then I feel bad when I get corrected because I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Sim. Got it. I won't forget that, though. <laughs> we just want to pronounce all the letters, don't we? Just yum. It also sounds like yum, like yum, because it's so good. I like their products. 
we sell them in um we have a store attached we have a store attached even the colors are yummy they make good colors too um we have a store attached to Amico. It's called the Brickyard. Maybe I'll take you guys on a tour of the Brickyard sometime because they've got Wi-Fi there. One problem with um, giving you a full tour of the factory right now is I need to get Wi-Fi out there, so I need a hotspot with me and a microphone because they have, um, we call it the Muzak. They've got music playing all the time, and I want to make sure that you can be able to hear it. And wasn't it awesome? It's such a cool place to be all the time. It's like uh, an episode of How It's Made, except for I care. Um... <laughs> Yeah, when I got here um, for my interview, they brought me um, they brought me into the back, and I had only ever been to the ceramics supply store brickyard um, to get stuff for my undergrad. And when I finally made it to the back in the factory, I was like, "What is this, Willy Wonka for things that I care about? Like this is amazing." I was just waiting for them to tell me, like, "And you've won a new car. Plus, all this is fake." No, it's amazing. It's so cool. Well, you should come up, Russell. I know you live close-ish. If you're ever in the area, come up and I'll give you a tour. Call me. A tour. Come be a tourist, an Imico tourist. Because it's neat. Um, everything from... We make Brent wheels, um, Brent extruders, Brent slab rollers, um, kilns, um, pottery. I already said pottery wheels. Um, and then we also make glaze... Um, on gobes, under glazes. Um, we make something called permaplast, which is an oil based clay that doesn't harden. Um, you can use it for mold making. I like to make stuff out of it and then cast it um, for like push molds. Um, trying to think of what else. We make rub and buff, if anybody's ever used that. It's a metallic finish for porous objects. Thank you, Keaton. Have a good day. Everybody have a good day. It's important. Thank you. I'll try. Once I got all these pots done. The nice thing about all these is that they get to go into the same kiln because we fire both the uh, PC and Chino layering um, pots and the Celadon pots to cone six with no hold or anything like we don't do anything fancy because we want to make sure that like um you guys are able to get the results that um we do pretty easily like we wouldn't do that to you we don't want to get all fancy it looks fancy but this isn't anything fancy yeah we'll see you there carl carl mankert and seek is going to be great i can't wait 50th anniversary that's going to be nuts yeah i expect you guys to come say hey because I'm going to be working at the booth 9 to 5, like, every day. Probably 8 to 5. I can't remember the time exactly. Last year was kind of crazy. In behaved ways and not in behaved ways. Yes, it's probably going to be a crazy, crazy in Sika if enough people are going like I think they are. Um, I don't know if um, you guys probably know this. It's the 50th anniversary. I don't know. Um, so, layers. Oh, I skipped a pot. Whoops. It's going to notice. Hi, why are you laughing so much? <laughs> Is glazing funny? Sorry if I entertain hecklers. It's kind of a personality thing. I don't speak French, so I don't know what he says, and I don't want to know. It can be sometimes, yeah. just a little bit crazy, but a good crazy. Um, Milwaukee was less crazy. When I went to Milwaukee, I was the club president of our, um, our college ceramics club. Um, I did a lot of driving, <laughs> especially since our hotel was like 15 minutes away from the actual convention center. So it was kind of like, get in the car, guys. You guys need to get in the car <laughs> or stay here and find a ride. I don't know. I should have done that more often. Yep. And he was there too. Russell was there with me. He was my co-pilot, my vice president and my co-pilot. Do, 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 do
Sorry, glazing is so boring. I'm trying to think of more stuff to tell you about Amico. Not that there is a lack of things to say. There's never a lack of things to say about Amico. I do have to say that the Celadons, when I started working here, the Celadons had first come out. And I'd never like done a lot of carving. I'm I'm more illustrative in my work. Um, I did the I did the How I Amico plate the other day um, for the contest. Actually, that's something I should tell you guys about. You guys have one more day to enter for the How I Amico hashtag How I Amico contest on Instagram. So if you guys follow us on Instagram, post a photo or a video or like a hyperlapse or a boomerang or anything um, of how you use Amico products and tag us and um, you can be entered to win $150 worth of free product which is pretty awesome. Um, Pauline and Nicole from uh, Chicago last month won our um, 3,000 follower uh, contest and this is our 4,000 follower contest. Um, <laughs> we're going to have to slow down because you guys are catching up with us. You guys are just, you know, following us like crazy, and it's great. But that's helping all our information get out there. We're seeing a lot more sharing. Um, it seems like getting through on social media has really helped us connect with you guys, and we really like it because, you know, we've got personality, and we're potters too. So we want to hang out, really. And that's kind of what this Periscope is for too. It is good news. Everything's been going really well. But it's all because you guys, like, we wouldn't be doing well just by ourselves. We just make glaze. Like, it's just everybody responding to us and using our products and talking about them to their friends. And, you know, the more we can help you guys out by, like, sharing stuff like this and the information that we have on our website, all our resources, um, it can just really, really help everybody grow all together, including me. I learn a lot doing this job. Um, you guys ask me great questions. Um, Sometimes I don't even know the answer to the question because I'm, I'm 23. I could only know so much in the ceramics world with the education that I have so far. So, But, yeah. Yeah, isn't that scary? I'm sorry. I'm 23 and I'm in charge. Whoops. <laughs> but, yeah, the Celadons, when I first started working here. Oh, um, we talk about that, and I know that everybody talks about that on the, um, on the Facebook page. Um, but I have to tell you that I don't know what decision they'll come to, but it is um, it is known that people want us to change those containers, um, also the gallon containers. The problem with that, though, is that we have all original um, equipment. Um, we have all original equipment from, um, sorry, Russell, I read that. Everything is always evolving. Um, and that's a really great thing. I love that. You can grow with it. I think that's why I like ceramics so much is you can grow alongside it and it can make you grow whether you like it or not. Um, so the bottles. Uh, it, we have all original equipment that is designed to grip that bottle and screw that lid on. Um, and it's going to take like the whole change would take like two years, one to two years. Um, and I can't give you an answer as for whether or not they've even decided to do it. So I know some people on the Facebook page were like, all right, I'll see you in two years. And I was just like, ah, I, I don't have the authority to tell you that we are doing that. So, but just know that we hear you. We do understand that they're inconvenient. It's just a really big change. So I know that was a really long convoluted explanation for, I don't know, but, um, we love you guys and we are listening to you. It's just like a matter of, um, value judgment and trying to make sure that we are, staying efficient on top of getting everything that done that we need to get done and also like making changes that we need to make too. So, but we have had quite a shift in management lately um, when it comes to how we uh, do problem solving and stuff. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but our customer service has gotten like on point. Exactly, yep. But um, we've started a new um, program I don't know if it would necessarily bankrupt us. Um, it would just, I don't know the cost. I don't know the cost at all, but um, there's a lot that would go into it. Um, so maybe I should get some more clear answers. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, so, oh, the Celadons. The Celadons, when I first started working here, 
Probably. I know people are like, you should return to the metal lids. I'm like, but do you know how much cheaper plastic is? That was a step forward, not a step backward, um, cost-wise. It helps helps the glaze be cheaper. Um, yeah, if uh, you guys wanted the bottles changed, too, that would probably lead to a price increase. Just saying. Um, businesses are businesses. Um, so... See, celadons. When I first started working here, the celadons had just came out, and uh, I did that volumetric mixing video. You can intermix them, which is really neat, and make brand new colors that you've never seen before in celadon. Make it all special and be, have people be like, dude, what color is that? That's like a peach celadon. Well, that's just marigold and weeping plum, or marigold and cherry blossom. Um, if you check out our YouTube, you can see our volumetric mixing video. That same technique applies to the satin mats, too, except for the red and orange. Don't mix the red and orange. They can produce a little bit of cadmium, and you don't want that. None of that. But you can mix the red and orange with anything else, just not together. And that's the satin mats for cones 5 and 6. Um, I feel like this periscope is extremely long. What's the usual uh, running time for a periscope? Do you guys get bored? Like, is there any attention span problems? Because I know I'm, I'm not getting bored. I just I don't want to bore you guys. I'm having fun hanging out. Um, I didn't start doing a lot of carving and stuff. I first started with like illustration, painting on my pots with thunder glazes and stuff like that. But once I got introduced to the celadons, I was like, oh, this is a whole new ball game from many times to hours long. That makes sense. I guess they probably do that for, like, like sporting events and stuff. I know I, acc I accidentally watched some kind of, like, opening ceremony for a very foreign church the other day. Um, that was pretty cool, though, because they were singing some really pretty songs. Um... I watched for a few minutes. That was strange. <laughs> no, not really. If you can tell, I'm a little like, nah. I'm staying in one place. That's an that's an achievement. Um, usually, I'm rolling all over the place and like whipping around the table. Um, at least the iPad has a big screen, right? Um, P, P what? <laughs> um, the Sheenos just came out not too long ago. <laughs> you pocket dialing me. P for pocket. Um, so, yeah, the Sheenos just came out a little bit ago. I love the fact that on white clay, like you can see I'm glazing on pure white clay, and the tile that this is fired on is also white clay. But see how toasty that gets when it breaks? It looks like it's done on a darker clay body. So if you want something to look really atmospheric and earthy and dark, the chinos are really good because it gets super toasty. So I know I like a good toasty piece sometimes. Um, I really like the hibiscus mat because it's, um, obviously it's pink, and, uh, and it's also really toasty and very, very pretty. It's a unique color. Um... I also like the cacao mat a lot too. This is the cacao gloss that I'm putting on right now. They all look the same when you um, have them in their raw form though, which is kind of funny, just in case you screw up. <laughs> Make sure you pay attention. The nice thing about the celadons um, is that they're all mostly um, not true to color, but they're hinting at their color when you put them all in raw. Um, like, you can see that's still wet. Um, so, the marigold piece is like a light, very, very pale yellow, and then the, the weeping plum piece has a pink hue to it, so I can tell what glaze I put on it first. I really like that about the celadons. Um, the the only solid on that isn't is aqua. Yep. Oh, the chinos. Yeah, like this one's a little bit um like a lighter orange, and this one's like a brown, but it's like an orange brown. That one's like a light orange brown. 
It's like the arguments you get in with your mom. You're like, no, it's salmon. She's like, no, it's coral. Those kind of arguments. But when they all come out of the kiln, they're just like, pretty. <laughs> it doesn't matter what color they start off as. I think I get in those fights with my mom, though, because um, my darn glasses. <laughs> Someone asked me earlier about my glasses, if they affect the way I see color, um, and I don't think I completely answered the questions. My eyes color correct while I wear these, so everything looks super normal right now. Yeah, exactly. Everything looks completely different after firing. Um, I have a really hard time. I'm a studio monitor at a clay center, and every time someone's like, I want the blue glaze, and I'm like, okay, and I open it, and it's orange. They're like, no, I said blue, and I was just like, well, have you ever seen a rusty fence? Yes, it's nice. Actually, here, I think you can <laughs> see how pink that is. That's not that pink, right? It's not that bad. But when I take them off, everything looks kind of green um, because my eyes have been correcting for pink so much. They put a lot of green in um, to correct for that. That's a weird thing you learn after a while when you do color correcting for... Um for tiles which is something we do very very carefully if you guys see our tiles on our website um, I know a lot of people on the 5-6 page get concerned because um, in the 5-6 page I mean the um, Imico 5-6 exchange on Facebook um, and that's for 5-6 um, buyers on Facebook who use our products um, they get uh, I do this. I completely forget what I was talking about just now. If someone could remind me, that would be awesome. I'm going to keep glazing. Um, that's my attention span, and I'm really sorry. Um, trying to think. Da, 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 da. Yep, brain fart. Totally. Color correction. There we go. Thank you. Um, people get really concerned about the color correction that we do, and they say that our tiles are wrong. But they're as correct as they can be on our computers. Um, they spend uh, like a week per box, which is a whole set of tiles for one glaze. Um, and they spend a week color correcting on their computers to make sure that they look correct um, for digital and for print. However, when you print things off on your own computer or look at them on, their, on your own screen, we haven't color corrected for your digital display or your... Um, or your phone or your printer and some printers print more yellow so that's why we like really need people to understand that they have to make test tiles and um, and see how it looks on their own clay before they start to glaze their own pieces I hope that makes sense and we never want to sound like we're bullying anybody but definitely like clay really impacts glaze and so does um, digital display and printing. So if you really, really, really need to know what it's going to look like and have it turn out well, definitely make test tiles. I make a lot of test tiles just because I spend a lot of time on my work, and it's really sad to have it not turn out right. Um, so I'm going to keep going. Chugga, 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 chugga. Um, we have a whole video on how to make test tiles, like different kinds of test tiles. Some advice that I have is if you have certain textures and stuff like that, like make sure that you make test tiles that um, imitate those textures so the glaze will behave the same. Like if, if you have a really textured piece but really like smooth test tiles, that's not necessarily going to tell you what the glaze is going to look like on your piece and it may break funny or you may not like how it looks after it turns out. Um, it can also tell you if uh, your clay releases a lot of gases and cause pinholes or if you need to like slowly fire or change your bisque temperature and you were the one that said that you used them for your bathroom tiles did you share those on facebook i feel like i saw those and those looked great i would love to see a complete picture of that on the facebook page when you're done i'm really excited about those i like seeing people use stuff for their for their actually like installment of things in their home I try, yes, and that's a really great idea um, so that you can get all that information in one place. And sometimes I like to, um, I have a test tile Tuesday way far back, or if you look in our album on Facebook, there's a circular tile, and it looks like it's cut up into um, two slices of pie that have two different colors, and then the rest of the pie is the two colors layered together to make sure I remember what those two glazes are, what they look like alone, and what they look like together, and they are all there together. So... That's good, too, to have a hole there. Um, 
<laughs> I hope you mean that in a nice way. I really like my glasses. Um, and they're real. And I need them. So laugh all you want. But um, the um, I'm using Marigold Celadon on this textured piece. It's starting to lose its texture a little bit because I got the second coat on here. You can kind of see there. And this is the yellow celadon. It's super bright and pretty, and I like it. It's so pretty. Look at all those yellow hearts. Yellow hearts! Um, yeah, the... Um, dang, I forgot what I was talking about again. You guys got me. Oh, no, I really like it when people install... Um, tiles using our glazes in their homes because that's just that's absolutely ingenious and beautiful and DIY I love stuff like that we have a um, we have a contest going on online where you can uh, win Amico bucks and you can use this to pay uh, for for things things from Amico look at all those hearts thank you you guys are so nice stop <laughs> um, those are nice colors too mmm look at those um, so uh, if you do those style stuffs, um, do we ship to Australia? That I'm not sure about, and I'm going to write down. And I'm not sure. Um, but I do know that if you call Amico, or if you call Brickyard and place an order, um, you can get an outside order placed for another country. But as far as Australia goes, that's pretty far, so I have to make sure before I say that. Um, so I can ask about that, and hopefully I can get that information back to you. Um, if you follow us on Facebook, maybe, uh, send us a message, um, and remind me. Uh, actually, I think I just remembered someone sent me a message a little while ago about Australia, and you guys might have a new dealership, or another, um, distributor, not dealership, this is not cars. Um, you can call us, it's fine. <laughs> um, the, yeah, I do believe actually I just told somebody that, um, there's a new dealer in Australia somewhere. I'll have to find it. But if you message us on, um, Facebook, just, uh, go to the Amico Brent, uh, Facebook and, uh, pop by, give me a message and I'll answer it for you. Um, I just have to ask Kevin, uh, what the name of that place was again. Yeah, that's super long distance, but hey, you know, that shows that people from across the whole planet want our glazes, and that's really cool. I'm going to go tell the department that one when I'm done, because they like to hear that stuff. So, yeah, Kim, if you want to know that, send me a message. You can do that on the um, Amico Facebook page. Um, the contest. Sorry, I was just talking about that. So we have another contest going on that's kind of ongoing. Um, if you look under... Amico.com slash we want you. Uh, it is a, an ongoing contest where you create lesson plans on our website and there's a there's a tutorial on how to do that and everything, but it's very user friendly. And uh, you put projects on there that you do or um, like those tiles um, that you put in your bathroom if you want to make a lesson plan or a how to on how to make bathroom tiles and how to install them and then upload it onto our website and share it with everybody. Um, yeah, it'll go up on our website, it'll go public. Like we're just trying to make a big archive of just like as many projects as we can. A lot of different ways to use our products and stuff like that. And it's a chance to win for you. It's a chance to share with everybody else. So if you guys want to participate in that, go to amico.com slash we want you. And um, I can't remember if it's a backslash or a forward slash. I'm not good at computers. I'm in charge of social media, and I'm not good at computers. This is great. My friend called me the uncoordinated social mediator instead of the social media coordinator, and I think that's my favorite title. The uncoordinated social mediator. <laughs> um... So yeah, that contest, and don't forget the How I Am a Co contest, because that one's going to be a lot of fun, and it's a random pick, um, so anybody has a chance to win. I'm just going to, I'm going to walk into work tomorrow, and I'm just going to, like, randomly pick a name out of a hat, and uh, I, last time I literally printed all the names off, cut them up a whole bunch, and shoved them into a pot and picked one out, and it ended up being Pauline and Nicole from uh, Chicago. 
and she works at Little Street, and she makes wonderful work, and she just got $150 worth of glazes, that could be you. And that would be awesome, right? So why not? If you can't, you can't win a race, you don't run. So, um, but there will be other chances for uh, contests in the future, I'm sure. Try to clean up my table here a little bit. Made a little bit of a mess. Whoops. Use some of my... Gotta stay hydrated. Because I'm working up a sweat here. Not. Alright. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody loves Obsidian. I'm nobody's David Girl. See, actually I am. I'm engaged. If that uh, if that affects anybody watching, I'm engaged. You can go now. Um, <laughs> I'm here for the glazes. Oh, I think a lot of people's studios are really messy. I'm not sure we could qualify as necessarily clean. Um, but yeah, it's not too bad. Um, the gallon buckets are being worked on. There was um, I'm not sure if you saw the post on uh, the Amico Five Six Exchange, but. Uh, there was a problem with the labeling. Um, there's been some legal changes and stuff, so they have to change the, the labels um, in order for those to go in. Yeah. And before that, <laughs> well, that's because I cleaned it a while ago. We had, um, we had a workshop here, and we had to clean the absolute crap out of this place, and uh, I did. It was really fun. Um, it was really tiring, and it took a really long time. You'd be amazed how much crap we can put in here. A lot. Um... It's good crap, though. It's great crap, and I can use it all the time. Because uh, it's a secret, Russell. Russell, you're a secret ninja. A secret pottery ninja. We have people come on tours and stuff, and we've, uh, we've really made a recent effort to try and, like, make room for that and keep it clean up here so there can be classes stuff like that. I know we have a group of ladies that we call the Wednesday ladies and they're these really sweet older women that come upstairs every Wednesday up here with me. This is upstairs in relation to everyone else. This is kind of over on a mezzanine over the factory. Um, actually to take you guys out because I don't think I'm gonna sit here and finish these for you guys because these are these are drying pretty slow because it's kind of cool up here. Things don't dry fast here. The store does look really awesome. Um, Chi Chi's done a really, really good job of organizing um, everything. Chi Chi's in charge of the brickyard now. JD, where do you live? Are you from around here? You local? Mm hmm. Yep. High humidity. It's kind of warm outside. Kokomo, cool. So you're from around. Not too around, but somewhat. Um, lost my weeping plum. There it is. So I realize that you're not really in the pot if it's short. Nah. Nah. Come on. Tour time. <laughs> yeah, actually, J Dude, you were there last week and dropped five hundred on shelves. That can get expensive, but shelves are so necessary in ceramics. I don't know what we would do if we didn't have shelves or tables or so, you know. Thanks for whoever makes really nice shelves. I like our carts, the Amico carts, the big ones. Those are like the nicest thing in the world. I love those because you can trade in and out wear boards really easily. Um, like if you see, if you see these, um, you just take them in and out and you can um, just pull, <laughs> pull off a shelf and take it over to your kiln sloppy. Oh, maybe it is time to go. I'm getting a little antsy. All right. You guys seem to like it when I'm hyper. There's a lot of hearts there. Um, <laughs> um, but I really have to finish the second coat on everything. So remember, when we do the PC Celadon and PC Chino layering, we do three coats and three coats to get them nice and juicy to get those full effects going um, so they don't run dry on us or anything. When I say that, I kind of mean like... Um, if there's running, we want it to happen a lot, um, so we can get those really juicy flows. 
You're afraid the kiln shelves are... Oh, those kind of shelves. Yes. Kiln shelves. Those can get expensive and heavy. I hope someone helps you carry those out to your car or you got it yourself because you're an independent person. But I had to... Um, I was photographing for the website. That's some one of the things I do. I was photographing uh, kiln shelves for the website. Um, because obviously for a website you need pictures of all of your products. Um, I was taking pictures of... Bryce is a really great guy. I love Bryce. He's awesome. I see him every morning and whenever I have my lunch he's like, what'd you bring me? I'm like, nothing dude. This is mine. And then we're friends. Um, but... Um, shoot, attention span, jeez, talking, kiln shelves, all right, I'm pretty good at reminding myself sometimes, um, I was photographing the kiln shelf kits, um, because we, we sell certain kits that go with certain kilns, if you're just starting up and buy a kiln, um, and you need, like, a certain amount of supports, a certain amount of shelves, and <laughs> it's totally fine, I'm doing it myself, too, um, I, had, I only had one cup of coffee today, too. That's just crazy. Um, but the um, the kiln shelf kits, I was photographing those, and uh, I did it all in one day, but there's a lot of kiln shelf kits. And in order to do that, I had to, like, set them all up, um, kind of pose them, and then take a picture, and then take them all back down. And I did that with, like, probably, like, 10, 15 kits. So it was the equivalent of, like... <laughs> loading empty kilns on top of a table for like a whole day. <laughs> it was a lot of weight and it was a lot to handle, but it was kind of fun. I was a little confused when they're like, can you go out into the factory and get a lot of shelves? I'm like, do I get something to carry them with? <laughs> but they gave me a cart, so this is a good place to work. They take you. They take you seriously when you say I can't do that. <laughs> I tried though. Tried to carry a couple at a time at the end. Got him. But it can be really nerve-wracking to set up kiln shelves on a table, not inside of a kiln, because it just, like, is a little wobbly. <laughs> but it's fun. It's more of a challenge. So it's kind of cute to see all the, all the flowers showing through there. I carved this a couple weeks ago, and I've just now gotten around to it. That's how busy we get. I just... I love making things here, and getting to make things for the advertisement is really a, um, it's a huge honor. I just wish I get to do it all the time. Don't hit the table. I'll try not to knock over all those fancy kiln shelves. Huh? <laughs> you break it, you buy it, right? I tell that to people who um, don't wipe their bottoms off or don't want to wipe their bottoms off of pots at the clay center that I work at. Cause I'm like, they're like, what happens if we don't wipe off the bottom? I'm like, then you get to pay for the whole kiln shelf that's stuck to the bottom of your pot, ma'am. <laughs> that's what happens. And they're like, oh, okay, I see. So, yeah, I'm like, unless you want that $30 cup to become a, uh, a very, very pricey cup, I suggest you wipe off the bottom of your pot. Do, 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 do. Glazing. I'll probably take you guys out onto the balcony again and uh, kind of show you the world like uh, when Rafiki holds up Simba, I'll hold up the iPad and show you the, I'll hold you, hold you over the factory and show you again to kind of show you out. Um, sorry this has been so patchy and full of my attention span, but do it, I will. Yeah, I know some people weren't watching the first really crazy kind of trial by fire periscope that I did, but I kind of wandered around the studio and showed everybody what we were working on. So I will show you the complete results and I was gonna show you the tiles, but I decided not to because these are gonna come out in advertisements in probably over the summer because we are, we just submitted our April ads today and we're two ahead, and I'm making it so we're four and five ahead. Um, so these will come out over the summer or early fall, probably. Um, but yeah, that that kind of cliffhanger. It's like a month, month, month by month cliffhanger. But I was just gonna show you how informal this process is, and you know the fact that 
I just sit up here and do this, or Kara does it, and we're people too, and we like to we like to share our results. But we have just as many failures as probably anybody else too. We just have the benefit of like we don't have to share them. Um, but it's because we like to play around and see what's possible with our products. That's the kind of stuff I share on Testile Tuesday. Like, I don't know if you guys saw um, Testile Tuesday a couple weeks ago, or like two weeks ago maybe, um, I think. Uh, I found some crystals, some crazy crystals on uh, one of our, our tests for the Potter's Choice glazes, the layering. It was um, PC49, maybe, um, textured turquoise. Or no, frosted turquoise, sorry, it was one of the frosteds. Um, yeah, we put that over oil spot, and it got some crazy, crazy little pinwheels. So I put that on Testile Tuesday, and I kind of, um, sorry, just showed up. I'm glazing this plate right now, and it's a, it's a plate for the Celadon PC layering ads for uh, Ceramics Monthly um, and Pottery Making Illustrated. We also put... Um, we also put material in magazines like Arts and Activities, um, Arts and Activities and School Arts, um, but that's usually where our like lesson plans go and stuff. And that's also what we do up here in the studio. We make um, we make stuff for uh, for the lesson plans because you have to have sample products to show people to kind of inspire them um, to show them the, what they could do with that option. Um, see those little feet? Aren't they cute? Um, I'm in the studio at American Art Clay Company in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, American Art Clay Company has been around since 1919. We make clay pottery wheels. We own Brent wheels. Um, yeah, so if you've ever used a Brent wheel, uh, I probably walked past it when it was being made or it hung out here for a while or something like that. It's kind of cool to see him being made all the time. I'll take you guys back there once I figure out how to bring a hotspot with me and also a microphone um, and headphones because you won't be able to hear me over the music. Um, but that being said, let me walk out onto the magazine, uh, mezzanine, not magazine. Thank you. Um, studio. Look at all those Brent wheels. Ooh. My boss likes to use a standing wheel. He's the only one. We got some tiles, stuff, and I'm gonna take you guys out onto the mezzanine, and then I'll kind of see you off. And you guys are gonna have to wait until um, probably over the summer or in the fall, so you can see those uh, see those beautiful pots in the magazine. So, Amarco! This all in here, that's all clay. Um, back here, you can see the dipping buckets for. Um, nah, we're gonna do that. All right. So over here is all the dipping buckets. Um, you can see shipments ready to go out. Um, and I'll take you on a more personalized tour. Definitely like department by department. This is all glaze. So just boxes and boxes of glaze, and that goes all the way back there. And all the craft materials made back there too, like uh, rub and buff and stuff. These are the kilns that we fire all our advertisement pieces in, and I use them too. So, like that one's done. I wonder what's in here. Oh, it's just metal. Never mind. So here is more stuff. This is brickyard stuff. <laughs> you can see the door. That's where the brickyard is. Yeah, it was an empty kiln. It was a mistake. I didn't see that it wasn't complete. It just said idle. Whoops. Somebody closed it and I don't know why. So, alright. I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me glaze and stay tuned because we'll just keep sharing with you whenever we feel like it might be interesting. So, alright. Awesome day. <laughs> I'm really good really, really good at turning this off. <laughs>